to cut up the New York Post things and uh, make f every see these collages they used to make with the uh, words and playing with words and paste it all over the city. And also in a more direct uh, neighborhood um, politics was the all the East Village. They always used to wear beer. All the queens, so the gay guys wear the beard and all. And he made a whole <laughs> movement was a gay men against facial hair. And he had a stencil, and he stands all over the city, you know. <laughs> well, that's politics. <laughs> I, I, one, two, three, four, five. It's great to be alive. Five. So then this group of art students came to School of Visual Arts, and they lived in the wow. East Village. And it was this very unusual, unusually brilliant crowd of kids. Um, Ann Magnuson, Keith Herring, Kenny Sharp, John Sex, Chen no. Quang Chi, Bruno, and they had this huge kind of creative wild thing going on. I really don't even remember how the subway drawings first started. I mean, I remember when I started, but I don't really remember why, except that I had noticed one of the empty black panels and it just seemed to be the perfect place to have a drawing. So I went above ground, bought a piece of chalk and went back down and did it. Oh, come on, get out of here. Give me a break. Drawing in the subway always had a kind of element of um, kind of fear of the unknown because you, you always had to be prepared um, to get arrest, to get caught, and getting locked up for a few hours. I got an arrest for graffiti in the subway. Oh, I could get this on film. It didn't happen that often. Most times, cops would just give you a ticket and let you go. Um, but there was always sort of that edge to it, because you never know. You never know which kind of cop is going to catch you. The reason to keep doing it was that you were immediately seeing the effect of what you were doing, and you were immediately sort of seeing the, you know, the power of this of this thing to communicate and to actually touch people and stop them in their tracks, etc.